One year ago, I addressed you on stage in San Diego, honored to accept my new role as convention chair of this year's Napava Convention. I asked you, come to DC, to come to the nation's capital, to come to Napaba's home. But I didn't have a crystal ball in hand. I didn't know DC was going to be so hot. I wasn't sure ultimately how we would come together, but I knew it was important that we do. Never before has it been more important for us to converge, and more importantly, to do what we do, which is to give back. Now, you might have heard a number of things throughout this convention, but as your convention chair, I am proud to announce that we have officially broken our convention attendance record with over 2,120 attendees. This is the largest gathering of APA attorneys in history. We are all a part of history. For this, I thank each of you, our generous sponsors, and our Napaba staff. Our fearless executive director, Tina Matsuoka, who's the Tina is the only person who can put up with 50,000 APA attorneys year in and year out. <laughs> Napaba staff, Navdeep, Pang, Arya, Brett, Orion, and Robin, I want you to know this. This is the biggest and most organized convention of all time. And it is directly because of your hard work and effort behind the scenes. Thank you. And there is one additional person who deserves appreciation for this convention, New Mom Priya Purandare. She's our secret weapon. She's the kind of leader that can handle so much on her plate and makes the hard parts look effortless. Thank you, Priya. All of you do more work for, the, for Napaba than any of us can or ever will know. Thank you so much. Now, even with all of this success, the world may still be a scary place right now. Bad fires, bad faith, bad actors with bad haircuts. But we have a secret. We have Napaba. We're the melting pot of our APA communities, distinct yet mysteriously bound together by deep roots and common traditions. Just being together feels so good. Being together is healing, despite the political fissures, even in this room. Because we feel, as lawyers, as APA lawyers, our getting together on its own can actually make a difference. As Napaba heads into its 30th year, we must continue to give back. We stand on the shoulders of those who came before us, our Napaba founders and our Napaba trailblazers. Now, there are too many trailblazers in this room to mention, but I would like to acknowledge a few. First, Wendy Sheba. <laughs> Wendy, as we all know, is a former Napaba president and was uh, the former co-chair of the convention the last time it was in DC. Wendy so wanted to be here, but couldn't make it. And of course, Wendy, we miss you. I was so lucky to learn about leadership from such a dignified person. Now, most of us know Wendy as an elegant, proper, graceful lady, but apparently she was an Emily Post in training. <laughs> Don Liu. Don is a Napaba leader and mentor who's not only a champion for elevating inside counsel, he's also a strong partner for outside counsel. He's tough, 
assertive, and, well, someone you don't want to mess with. <laughs> Apparently, he's always been like that. <laughs> Love the tough guy haircut, Don. Now, for everybody in this room, there was somebody who brought you into Napava. For me, it was Paul Hirose. Paul took a young South Asian kid who was involved in local bar associations and said, you, you need to be a part of Napaba. Paul is more than just a former Napaba president. He's a close friend and a mentor, and just a really nice guy. He's never really had a mean bone in his body. <laughs> but who could have thought that such a cute kid would take his vitamins, and say his prayers, and turn into the Incredible Hulk one day. <laughs> Paul, you didn't think you would get off with that baby photo, did you? <laughs> Finally, we have Dale Manami. As we all know, Dale forged a path when civil rights were new and scary. And Dale's pioneering work reminds us that though Nampaba does not have a political charter, we must always be vigilant. But while he was blazing a trail, Dale was also keeping up with his GQ routine. <laughs> but the mark of a true trailblazer is someone who lets it all hang out. Yes, enjoy it. <laughs> now, I tried to follow in Dale's footsteps, but I couldn't quite get his 24-inch pythons. There's only one Dale. Beyond our trailblazers, I want to thank my law firm, DLA Piper, not only of, for supporting me, but of supporting Napaba, long before I joined the firm. I also want to thank my two partners, Ron Holland and Ellen Bronchetti, who are not only my partners in San Francisco, but my very close friends. We closed our eyes, and we took a deep dive together. We promised to always watch each other's back. And you have. Your mentorship and friendship mean the world to me. Thank you for being here to share this special moment. The people who taught me the most about giving back and gave me the most are my parents and my sister. Like many of you, my parents came to this wonderful country with virtually nothing. My father worked three jobs, my mother too. They achieved the American dream when they bought a small house in LA and became small business owners. But it wasn't easy. You see, my dad was the only one amongst family and friends who had a car. So he would drop off three to four people on their way to work before he would go to work. And then he'd pick them up at the end of the day. I always had a sense of community of home, of lifting people up and sharing our successes. My parents impressed upon me the importance of giving back. They valued it, and they lived it. There would be a revolving door of people in our house who my parents helped give money, shelter, and moral support, even in times when they didn't have it themselves. My sister was no different. As my first and current role model, she embodies the definition of a superwoman. Dad and mom and sis who surprised me here today, stop crying, <laughs> and the rest of my family here, thank you for all you have given me and our family. Thank you. Please stand.
Finally, I'd like to take a moment to thank my wife, Amik. <laughs> Cindy, did you have to say that? Amik, you are the rock in my life. You somehow single-handedly keep our world together. You inspire me every day with your wit, charm, and your big heart. The way you love me is matched only by how much you love our family and close friends. I told you when I met you, you were too good to be true. It's still true today. Thank you, darling, for letting me follow my passion and always believing in me. Thank you. Now you see, I bring the values I learned from my family and those who inspired me to our Napava family. I am so honored and humbled to have your trust and faith to serve as Napaba president for the upcoming year. There is so much to do, and now more than ever, we need to give back. Progress is not inevitable, but it is not impossible. 11 months ago, almost to this day, I was eating dinner at a restaurant in San Francisco with my wife and two other friends. In the middle of dinner, an elderly white woman came up to us and said, shut up. We were shocked. We looked at each other and we looked at her as she walked away. We didn't really know what to say. Two minutes later, her husband came up to us, a big man. He told us, shut up, go back to the country you came from. He said, you're too dark, shouldn't you be driving a cab? He then asked if we'd ever fought for our country. You know, my heart raced, my body got hot, and I asked the man, how do you know where I was born? How do you know what my family has done here? But I was so shocked, unlike our commander, I couldn't even think of anything to say. After a few choice words, he fumbled over a response and then left. My emotions went from surprise to disbelief to shock, to anger. How could I, someone so active in equality and justice, someone who's so passionate about these ideals, a hardworking, educated attorney, how could I be talked to like this? How could I as an attorney, a human being, be talked to like this? What I was left with was a deep, understanding of our reality. We live in unprecedented times, filled with many of the same problems our trailblazers dealt with before us. This makes Napaba and what we do all the more important and significant. I ask you to join me and to give back to our community, our profession, and Napaba in four key ways. Number one, we need to target the issue of hate crimes, racially offensive dialogue, and bans of any kind. We will team with our civil rights partner to combat this issue and educate and protect our community. Today, we issued a statement condemning this. There was a, an incident last night where flyers were left on cars in Hoboken, New Jersey calling a Sikh Amer American, who is a member of our affiliate, a terrorist. On this flyer in 2017, on cars. Today, Napaba issued a, joint, it issued a statement condemning this and a series of hateful flyers targeting AP candidates in local elections in New Jersey this week, along with our affiliate, the Asian Pacific American Lawyers Association of New Jersey, 
and our partners. We must speak out against acts of intimidation. We must act against hate. Number two, we will build the brand of Napaba. We will make it a household name. We're more than just a convention for four days. We put on robust program programming, webinars, regional conferences, and professional development throughout the year. We have mentoring and professional development. We are a true national network for our community, and we're open to everybody. This is our brand. We must own it. Number three, we will take a close look at our infrastructure and build our growth. I have convened task forces to look at realignment of our regions, our nominations and elections practices, and new programming for our membership, including a collaborative program to allow our members to grow through mentorship together. And finally, four, we will tighten up the core foundation of NAPABA and continue to find ways to advance APAs in the legal profession. We will build on the relationships between in-house and outside counsel, including through this year's NAPABA Connects program. We will continue to strengthen our relationship with our now over 83 affiliates, as well as our almost 40 committees and networks, all of who do such inspiring work and are a pipeline to national leadership. And we will continue to collaborate with all of our national partners who are here today. In closing, we have much to do. We must do it together. We must lift each other up. We must find a way. And we must give back. I look forward to giving back with each and every one of you this next year. Thank you.